Duff here, before we get started, I just want to mention quickly, once again, the huge four-year anniversary sale they're having at GearBest. Um, since I made that original promotional video, I did uh, find out that they are having some issues with availability on uh, with Creality products on the chi or in the China warehouse. However, the U.S. warehouse does still have stock, and I believe some of the other warehouses outside of China do as well. So, uh, all the links that I have are for the U.S. warehouse, so be sure to check that out. That sale runs until April 9th. So uh, links will be in the description below. How you doing Duff here and it's time for another Duff 3D video. You may remember in the last 3D video that I shot I talked about uh, a couple different surfaces that I'm looking to install in my printers. Um, with the Dagama Neva I mentioned how I was having all kinds of problems getting the um, prints off of it. Sticking, it was just sticking terribly. And I ordered the Print in Z uh, surface for it. I did say that I was going to try to clean the surface on the Neva one more time. I used um, uh, I used a pure acetone solution and uh, that got off all the old crusty filament that was on there but it also made the surface even stickier. Um, when I did a test print it was just it was ridiculous trying to get it off so I'm going to put the print in Z surface on. Uh, and then we're going to also turn our attention to the Creality CR10 and we're going to put on the any cubic ultra base that I bought that I've been holding on to for several weeks. I've not put it on, but uh, we'll talk about that when we get to it. That should be a pretty easy swap. I'm going to do the Neva first. Okay, you may recall that I bought this uh, replacement surface right off of the, the Dagama 3D website. Okay, so when I ordered this from um, Dagama, the the, uh, the new surface just kind of came in an envelope and no instructions. So I just just for the heck of it, I emailed them just to. Make sure that there wasn't any rocket science involved with doing this. And I also was curious if, if um, you could just put this right on top of the existing surface, even though I know that wouldn't really make sense. But no, what they said you should do is peel off the old build grip surface and apply print in Z surface. So what I'm gonna do is use my heat gun and heat this up to make it a little bit easier. And then once I get that off, I'm gonna clean up uh, whatever glue is left behind. Let's get this filming out of the way here. I'm just using my spatulas that I uh, use to take off uh, prints normally. Oh no. Okay. I accidentally hit the power button. I'm trying to do this. I need one more set of hands. Alright, there we go. Okay. Man, that gun gets hot. Let's see if I can just heat it up and quickly pull this off. Okay, nice. Adios built-in build grip surface. So as you can see here, the um, the surface that's left behind is nice and clean. Uh, they did say to um, Wipe it down with isopropyl alcohol before applying the new surface. So let's uh, let's do that. I have a lot of it. I was afraid it was going to be like a big, sticky, gluey mess, but this is actually really, really not bad at all. But I think it is definitely helpful if you heat up the surface ahead of time. If you don't have a heat gun, uh, you know, use a hair dryer or something like that. I think that's all you really need. Pretty good. All right, have the surface clean. All right, so let's just lay this down one more time. It doesn't really matter. There's not like a top or a bottom on this. You just lay it on. So I'm going to peel off the 3M backing. All right, and I'm going to do my best to line this up accurately. I'm, I'm using the front edge as my, my alignment tool. And of course, it's not, that wasn't so good. It's hanging over a fraction of an inch on that side. And it feels really stuck on already. All right, I'm just gonna let it go because it, it really should not matter um, when it comes to printing. So, what we're gonna do with this. So yeah, if you use more care than I did, I probably should have lined this edge and made sure that this edge was as flush as well. I was just concentrating on this edge, unfortunately, so. Note to self, 
make sure to check two of the three edges when laying, laying it down if you're doing this at home. Okay, so I have a, a print file on the SD card that's in the Neva, so I'm just going to fire it off and let it print and see how it is in the new surface. Not doing any additional prep. Okay, so now let's turn our attention to the CR10. You'll see a, a print that I had running during the day. Now, like I said uh, in prior videos, this is kind of breaking my own rule. I got myself into a lot of trouble um, fixing things that not, weren't necessarily broke on the CR10, you know, doing mods and stuff just because I saw other people were doing them, uh, not necessarily because I needed them. So this borosilicate glass that I ordered uh, several months ago, quarter inch thick borosilicate glass, has worked very, very well. Um, it's, it's thick, so it doesn't warp. I've had no problems with warping. Um, it holds the prints on well when heated, but once the, um, the bed cools down, it pops right off in a similar way to the Anycubic does. And the other thing that I like about printing on bare glass or, um, or a mirror, for that, for that matter, is how smooth the surface that's on the glass or mirror is. I don't know how well that shows up in camera, but this looks this this feels as smooth as uh, as glass or a mirror, even though it's the 3D print. The combination of printing on the ultra uh, smooth surface and the heat just kind of fuses this together. So I, I really do like that. And one thing I did notice about the AnyCubic i3 Mega Surface, the Ultra Base, although it adheres awesome and um, to, I, I love it, it does not get your bottom surface this smooth and this shiny. So that is a trade-off. So. I always had the option to go back to this, so not a big deal. All right, so changing this is going to be easier than changing the changing the base on the Neva. Let's get rid of that skirt. It should literally just be removing four clips, taking this off, and putting it in a safe place. Right down there. All right. So now the AnyCubic base, I haven't even opened the box. Perhaps I should do that. Okay, cool. I got one of these with my uh, AnyCubic i3 and they give you one with this base. It's like, um, it's, it's paper that, that they recommend to use for leveling. It's nice, it has sort of a, a glossy surface to it. Probably be more durable than just using like regular copy paper or something. So that's, that's nice that they include that. The, um, New base is very well packed, just like the AnyCubic i3 is. Here you go. Beautiful, huh? Beautiful. Um, yep, there it is. All right, so this literally should just slap right on there. It fits very, very well. I mean, it is, it is, it is the exact dimensions of the CR10 build plate, so I shouldn't be surprised that it fits very well. And let's we're gonna clamp it down. Now with the, when you put this base on the AnyCubic i3, you don't have to use clamps. Um, it's already attached to the build plate. I, I assume it's by adhesive or some sort. But when you put this on the CR10, you do need to clamp it down. Put the other clamps, there they are. All right, so I'm going to turn on the CR10. The AnyCubic base is now installed. So now what I, assume is going to be the issue is the borosilicate glass that was on there is much thicker than uh, the any base so I'm going to have to obviously re-level it and I'm wondering if I'm gonna to have to do a new offset probably because I, I'm sure when I set it up originally with the borosilicate glass I, uh, I'm gonna try something Okay, on my SD card I have something called Leveling Assistant. It's a STL I downloaded. So what that does is that heats the bed to 50 degrees and then uh, homes the, the uh, print head and, and goes to various points on the bed. So we're going to let it do that and I'm going to try to level it from there, see if I have enough room in the travel of the springs to, to do it. I, I must because, I mean, this surface is probably similar in width to the factory glass so let me see where we're at i'll be back in a minute okay this routine not only heats the bed to 50 but it also brings the nozzle up to 170 degrees it, it um 
tries to account for the uh, fluctuations, the slight fluctuations you can get when something is hot versus cold. So this is probably a more accurate way to uh, level your bed than doing it uh, cold, which is the way I used to always do it with it cold. So live and learn. So I'm just looking at the springs on the bottom of the CR10, and I actually have a bunch of play yet. I can I can raise it up more than enough, I think, to account for the uh, the thinner dimensions of this um, base plate. So the uh, the current the concerns I had about the offset probably were um, ill conceived. Okay, we're almost there. The head is approaching 170 degrees centigrade, Celsius centigrade, whatever, and. Uh, should beep at me telling me it's the heating is done. Okay, it does, and on the display screen it says ready to level. So the way you advance it is you just keep pressing the button in, and you'll see that the head is now moving to the first position. Alright, it's, it's very high in the air right now, as you would expect. So we need to raise it up, raise the bed up. A lot. Wow, I never realized just how high up in the air that I had it for the borosilicate glass, but it's way up there. I'm just trying to get some drag on it. This uh, paper is nice. I can confirm that. Okay, there we go. So starting to get some drag right there. Okay. Alright, so I got the front left adjusted. Hit the button and it will now move to the front right. Alright, so we're gonna rinse and repeat here. Alright, there we go. Getting some drag. Hit it again. I bet you can guess where it's gonna go next. Yes, the rear right. So we can get some drag here. There we go. Alright, there we go. Okay. Hit it again. It will go to the rear left. Okay, there we go. Got some drag. Alright, so you hit it again and you might think that it's going to go to the center. Nope. <clears throat> it actually comes back front. It has you go through all it has to go through all points multiple times. Can't remember if it's twice or three times. Yeah, and it's good that it did because it actually the, the level felt different after doing the other corner. So, all right, so the front left. One nice thing about having your CR10 up on feet like this is it's easier to do this kind of stuff. I can get my hand underneath easily to uh, adjust it, adjust these knobs. You know, my, my feet that I printed to make this work on this workbench. All right, so let's... Let's see how we're doing back there. It right, feels a little tight. It's better. Yeah, that still feels good. All right, so, all right, yep, it does it three times. Here we go, going again. But this time, I think everything should be pretty good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, two times is probably sufficient. I don't think I've ever had to make a an, an adjustment on the third the third pass. So you don't have to even do. You can just keep hitting the button just to advance to the next stage, because the final the final um, adjustment is middle. It goes dead center, so. Okay. okay, it still feels good. So hit it one more time, and we should be coming to the center. And hopefully it feels pretty good in the center, too. Um, it's a little high. A little high. I'm not really feeling the drag, so we're going to raise these corners a little bit. All right, I'm just starting to feel the drag there in the bottom. Just moving the... All right. I think we're good there. Yeah, there we go. Okay. All right. So when you're done, you get that little happy music, and it's finished. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention. I don't. Uh, 
I think I talked about it in my last video how I was printing those drumsticks that I made in Tinkercad, those big tall drumsticks. Um, one thing I was having an issue with was the cables were getting very, very tight at the top of the, um, the gantry. And it was because I, I didn't really think about how I already had the frame of the CR-10 raised. I had it you know, raised a couple inches, but I didn't raise the control box, so that's why it was so uh, high. So my uh, makeshift fix for that for now has been to um, use a yoga block to raise the control box. I'm going to look. I'm sure there's something, there's some uh, base or something that I can print to, to raise the control back box and make it not look so uh, uh, lame, but uh, that was my immediate fix for it. So anyways, my surface is on, so of course the first thing I want to do is try to do a print. All right, let's see if we can get this in focus. There you go. All right, so to do this test, what I'm going to do to see how this bed works initially is I have another file on my SD card and I think it's called first layer test or something like that. There we go, first layer test. So we're going to print that. And what that does is it just prints like a, um, I think it's a hexagon, like a one layer hexagon that takes up a good portion of the build plate. And uh, you see how that looks. It's a good way to get a bearing on how your level is on your bed. So that's what we're doing. Okay, and for this test, I'm gonna, it's gonna, the bed's gonna be at 60 degrees and the nozzle, I believe, will go to 210. I really hope this works. I mean, I love the surface on my Anacubic i3, so I'm hoping I have different results from Uncle Jesse. I mentioned before that Uncle Jesse uh, got this exact same base for his CR10 because he loved it so much on his Anacubic i3 Mega. And uh, he had issues with uh, adhesion, like like to get it to work. I think he said he had to get his bed up to 70 degrees, and he just couldn't get it to stick. So I'm hoping that, that uh, it's something isolated to him and not to me. We will find out very shortly. Okay, so far, um, doing the outline here, it is sticking. My flow, you know, it was a little light at first because I just didn't have good flow going through the nozzle, but so far, so good. So I need to check back in when this thing is done. Okay, so my first layer print is done. Um, it looks pretty good from here. The temperature of the bed is dropped down to 28 degrees Celsius, so let's see how easily it comes off. No tool. It came off pretty darn easy. Looks good down there. Everything looks even. Um, so that's that. That performed very much the same as what I'm used to on the Anycubic i3 Mega. So that's kind of awesome. That's what I was hoping for. Yeah, that looks um, that looks really good. That's a good first layer. So I must have the bed pretty level and um, looks very even and no problems with adhesion while it was printing and came off super easy once it was cooled so that's what you're looking for. Um, I'll do some more uh, extensive prints, you know, bigger stuff and, and see if I have any issues with adhesion like, I, like um, Uncle Jesse talked about but hopefully I do not. You can hear in the background the Neva is printing away so it's, that's a Relatively small print, so we're going to let that finish and see what it's like to remove that from that new print in Z surface. Okay, so my print on the Neva is complete, so let's see how easy or difficult it is to remove it from the print in Z surface. The adhesion is obviously good. Okay, not bad. Definitely way better than it was with the, the build grip surface, you know, the condition that it got to. It came off much easier. Let's see if we can get the, get the little skirt off here. Yeah, it came off nice and clean. Okay. Not bad. Big improvement over wh where, where I was at with the build grip surface, for sure. 
All right, so there you go. That was uh, replacing the surfaces on not one, but two of my printers. And uh, two for two as far as success goes. The, the Anycubic i3 Ultra Base, at least in my initial test, worked very well in the CR10. And the Printin Z surface worked well in the Neva as well. So I'll be sure to keep you updated. I'll have links in the description uh, box below for the surface that I put on the CR10 and the Neva. And one more time, please keep in mind about that four-year anniversary sale on GearBest, links to that below as well. If you found this video interesting, please give it a big thumbs up. And if this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing. Feel free to leave a comment below. And that's it for now. Until next time, Duff Man.